I have you. I'm back again, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger said I would be. Said he'd be, but he meant me. Anyway, let's do a review. Cuts Tech Reviews 2018. And it says September. Don't know why. You're probably not even September when you're watching it. Here it is. We're going to do this watch. I can't remember what I was going to label it as. Hmm. You have to read the description. But does it fit me? No, it doesn't. You know why? It's for the little people. No, not elves. But hobbits? Yes. And children. You might have some of them. This is a polyurethane, rubbery, plasticky, but useful strap. Also, I know what you're thinking. They're running around. This strap's going to make them sweat. Possibly. These are kids. Do they sweat? I mean, you know, they're like athletes. They're mini athletes. However, it's rubbery so that it can be cleaned easily. These kids are everywhere, aren't they? They're playing in dirt, playing in soot. Pl they're not playing in soot. Unless they're a chimney sweep. See, if this was the 18th century, they would be playing in soot and they'd be glad of this watch. Easy to clean when they get back after a hard day up the chimneys. So anyway, to the point. This is a GPS tracking. It holds a nano SIM. Uh, it counts your kids' steps, the calories. Can't verify the accuracy of that. But can you verify the accuracy of your Fitbit or your um, Samsung watch? Can you? Can you? Probably not. I think those sort of measurements are to be taken a little bit tongue-in-cheek, tongue no matter who you are and no matter what device you're using. On this, they're probably less accurate than this because this has probably got more sensors. However, it doesn't matter. If it says at the end of the day your kid's done 10,000 steps, well done to your kid. If your kid's lazy and sits on the set all day and doesn't move about, and they haven't got an ailment or illness, then this will probably say they've done less steps. You know, this put all this stuff in perspective. Do you really care how many steps your kid does? Not really. They will find it fun and it might make them move more. That's where you're gonna get the benefit of the pedometer because the pedometer will show kids how many steps they've taken and they can play with their friends and say, look, I'm beating you, I've done more exercise than you do, I'm healthier than you. Kids, they're so competitive. I mean, I'm not competitive as long as I win, I don't care what happens. But anyway, this is a waterproof strap, a waterproof watch to a certain extent. It's not IP68. If your kid goes swimming in it, it's gonna break. If your kid goes and plays in the sand of it, it's probably gonna break. If he goes in the sea of it, it's probably gonna break, let's be honest. However, it is very durable and I will be doing a close-up soon. Um, to get the nano sin in, there's four screws there. It comes with a screwdriver and charging cable. The screwdriver undoes those four screws. Under that four screws is a battery. Then it's got a little flap on it so you can lift it up and then put the nano sim underneath and place it back down and bolt it back down. It's not ideal. I mean, you know, if it was your phone, it'd be a nice little tray you could slot it in. It would have been much better. But it works. There's a little sensor here. Now, I'm told, well, no, I've read, told isn't the correct word. I've read that this little sensor here tells you if your child removes the watch. Now, I've tested it with my daughter and it does work. But it also works if it slips around their wrist. If they haven't got it on tight enough and it slips around and a gap forms between the flesh of their skin and this sensor, it will say they've removed it. So make sure you tighten it up when you put it on their little tiny wrists. Um, the other thing I've found with uh, the watch is it works to treat the geofencing. You say, mark on, a, on the app. You've got to pair it with an app. Everything gets paired with an app. Mark it on the app where your child is, the school, your home, wherever. And just set these up. You can set loads of little locations up and say, when they enter that area, obviously wearing the watch, let me know and you'll get a message on your phone notifying you. When they leave that area, let me know. So you're dropping your kid off at a house party, a sleepover, whatever, geofence it. And you'll know when they leave that area. Easy, lemon squeezy, as they say. And you'll know instantly as well. So let's cut down to some of the other things. There's a little USB point here. I don't know if you're going to get this, and as I say, if you don't, I will probably just take the audio that I'm making now and replace the footage with a nice close-up. So let's do it as if we're in the room, zoomed in. This is a USB charging cover. You pull that off, it's a flap, it, you can spin it round, and there's your USB. And this is why I think the waterproof side of it's not very good, or probably isn't very good. 
there's a button there quite clearly says SOS. If your child presses and holds that for over 10 seconds, it will notify the primary contact of where they are, the fact that they've pressed this panic button or SOS button, but it will also engage a phone call between here and your phone. So your phone will start ringing effectively saying, this is your kid, this is an SOS. Yeah, so you probably want to answer that if I'm honest. And then you can talk with your child. But even if they, heaven forbid, were kidnapped and, you know, the, the villain hears you talking, snatches the watch off them, breaks it, whatever, it will still send you the location and um, time, etc., some other details of where they are and when it happens, so you can get over there quick smart and see what you can do. You can call this watch, but in the app you set up who can call it. So you add your number as one of the primary contacts. You add your wife's number or your husband, depends who you are, your aunt, your uncle, your the child's name, the child's granddad, the child's uncle or aunt, whoever. You can add their number into the address book and only those numbers can phone this watch. And I have tried this with my daughter and it is, I would say, my, the phone side is crystal clear. When I'm conversing with her, I can hear her and understand her clear as day. I don't know about this side because I wasn't with her, but she was conversing as though it was a good receptive conversation. But I'm presuming that this little speaker is not fantastic. Yes, it's going to be tinny but she didn't seem to have a problem. That's the point I'm making. Um, she can also send uh, voice messages. So she press and holds this number one key here. A little microphone appears here and she can speak. When she releases the button, it will take that voice and send it to my, the, well actually, it will send, well it will send it to my app, but it will send it to the app of the person you have stored as your number one contact. In the to button, it will send it to the person you have second in your contact list. Um, calls, it's weird. Calls and um, messages that she receives are answered by what is obviously a power button. But if you want to power the watch off, you press and hold and it will go off. You have to hold it for quite a while. But any other times when you're just tapping it, it will function. So if a message pops up, you have a new voice message, she can tap it and hear it. If the phone rings, she can tap it and answer it. Or he can tap it and answer it, it which is quite good. You can get alerts on your phone app when the watch is removed, as I said earlier. You also get an alert when the watch is down to a certain percentage of battery patch charge. So if it goes down below 4%, you want to know about it, surely. Um, you also get alerts for, obviously, geofencing, if they go outside of their geofencing. Um, you're, they can send you those voice messages that I mentioned earlier, but within the app there's a chat feature where you can send them voice messages as well. Um, I, I may actually demonstrate that at the end of the video or in another video and I'll provide a link down the bottom to uh, tell you about this. But let's get to the nitty gritty. The things, I mean, you probably, I don't know if your kids can be allowed to use this in school. Well, no, let me rephrase that. In English schools they're not going to be allowed to use it. But I don't know if your kids could be allowed to wear it. Now obviously if your child is in, um, say, let's say 10 or up to 14, 15 and still at school, they should be still at school, they will be able to wear this without a doubt. But kids in what we call junior school, I don't know what you call it in other countries, but in the English junior school, which is aged between 7 and I think about 11, uh, some will let you wear it, some won't. If it's a distraction, especially for other kids, that's not fair, and they won't let you have it. It's cut and dry of it, basically, and uh, to be honest, I agree with them. If your kid's gonna sit there just playing on it, messing around with it, then no, don't let them wear it. However, there's no games on it. There's no functionality for fun, other than the pedometer. The rest of it, it's all about calling your number one contact, or messaging between you and your number one contact, like an intercom system, and seeing what the date and time is. The rest of it, it's not for the kid, it's for us. I mean, I love to know where she is and what she's doing. She's gone to the park with her mother, I wanna know they're still at the park. I wanna know when they're coming home so I can start tidying the house so that I don't get caught out with rubbish everywhere and old newspapers and crisp packets strewn around. Get a little alert, geofence them, 
get a little alert. Oh my god, they've left the park this tidy up. I told the missus I would. Ah, I do lie a lot. So anyway, that's what it is. And the nitty gritty that you're after is the cost. The cost, the cost, the cost. What would you put on a price as for your kids' safety? What would you pay? What would it? Well, I bought a similar watch list by a company called Doki. And uh, the Doki watch is very good. Very good. Does very similar things to this. The other the thing that a Doki has an advantage is, apart from just calling me the number one contact when holding that SOS button, the Doki watch, they can scroll through a list of approved contacts and call all of them. Not at the same time. That's just silly. Call them one at a time, as and when. Uh, however, the Doki cost me quite a bit of money. I can't remember the exact price, but in the back of my mind, it's saying £150. Uh, something like that. This, on the other hand, is $23. I'm saying, um, you see the way I did that? Dollars? That's, that's the face I pull when I don't know what I'm talking about. $23? It's pounds. £23 in the UK. However, if you're in the US, you can get it for as little as $20 or $18 from China. But in the UK, you can buy them from a UK guy for 23 quid. I'll, I'll put a link down below. Um, great watch. I don't know what else to say about it without um, making you stop watching the video, to be honest. Go and have a look. Check out other people's reviews. Other people. I know what you're thinking, what's the title? Like I said, the title's down below. Check below to see the, the watch is called. When you buy these from China, there's probably a hundred different Chinese manufacturers that make these. So they all have a different name. One would be Kitty Watch, Kid Smart, Tracker Watch, Kids Track, Track Kids. You know, it, it, it could be called anything. Or even their name, Shenzhen, Tomzen, whatever. The point I'm trying to make is it, they pretty much all do the same. I have read reviews of people that have gotten from China and the GPS doesn't work. So, although I got this from an English person, English person, they, English person could be anywhere in the world. Although I got this from an English distributor, the, it was easy for, for me to send it back to an English distributor. It works. I've tested it all, I've tested the geofencing, I've tested the GPS, I can see the little icon, I've seen in people's reviews from other manufacturers they've bought before, and uh, the little GPS circle, you probably can't see it, but I'll show you anyway, doesn't show up. Well, this one it does. Go and check it out uh, on other reviews, just don't take my word for it. But if you watch a review where it says the GPS don't work, that's because they bought it from a poorly distributing manufacturer. Check it out yourself. There's some links below where you can purchase these, where I purchased it from. And trust me, this works. The GPS works. So, you know, it is definitely quite good. Obviously quite good. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to think. If you're looking at me, that subscribe button's probably down there. So hit that. This big red button. Right there, subscribe. Smash into that as hard as you can. Also, throw a comment down. Don't comment on how I keep flustering my words and at the end of the video it looked like it was cut a bit because it's going to be cut a lot because I did sort of get a lot wrong. It was gibbered up too much really. But stick a comment, stick a like, stick a subscribe. These videos are coming thick and fast. Next one I think I'm doing is the Note 9. Shouldn't really have mentioned it because if you're watching this in 2022 just to have a recap, well Note 9 is probably long dead by now. Let me know what you think. Peace out, or whatever other people say when they're finishing their videos. Hello, right, so we're back. So I thought I'd show you the accompanying app so that you can see what it's like. This is, if you scan the back of the box, this is where it takes you to an app called SC Tracker 2. Um, I'll boot this up for you so you can all see it. This is my Note 9, but it'll work on many. You should get this, then an advert. Here's the advert. Uh, just close out. I'll cover the... Uh, Screen a sec, just so you don't see my login details. I'd say no thanks to saving that. And here we have, my daughter Bella is apparently here. Although she's not here because that's just me with the watch. But still, you get the idea. Um, other things you can do that. It's nice, it's colourful, it, it works. That's a, a decent, accurate thing of where the studio is. If I click chat, you'll see a chat between me and her. I don't press any of these little ones with the speech because you'll hear my voice saying things like I love you darling etc and what she's got there's a word there she said the word hello to me which is 
different. She doesn't normally speak to me, but uh, simply start recording if you want to record a voice message, or you can type a message by pressing the keyboard and typing it. Um, if we come back a bit, let me go through some of the other things. Some things that's key, I think, is like the geofencing, also known as security zone on here. Find out where your child is or where you're going to drop them off and give a little plus sign. Find the location and say, look, uh, I don't want them past this point here. Then using this slider, you can reduce and increase the area that she's allowed to move in. So if she's with friends in a park, maybe cover the whole park. Click save and it will save that. Uh, you've got to give it a title. So she could be at the park, as I said. So maybe you can call it park. Uh, click save and away you go. Save. Now we have park and home. So with park, is I've enabled it. You can see the little tick there that's green that says that's enabled. If the watch leaves or enters, by the way, not just leaves that location, bang, it's going to go off. I'm going to switch that off because, well, she's not at the park, to be honest with you. She's around someone else's house. Um, other things. You can locate the watch, although I can see it quite clearly. Just hitting locate is just going to send a thing and saying, where are you? And look, successfully posted its current location. You can also see the battery there is down to 4%. That's because I ran it down before I started shooting this video, which is fine. We won't let that bother us. Uh, there is a history. Now, there is no history because it hasn't been anywhere, but you can show a historical route of the watch and replay the route in the app. There are other options here. The health, you can see the steps. Do not disturb. So you can set it so that she can't make calls or, or he can't make calls, receive calls. Messages, you can see the messages. Rewards, I don't know what rewards is. Um, alarm clock is what we spoke about earlier where you can say, you know, you can play for three hours, but I want you back and set the alarm for three hours. So when the watch buzzes, she knows to come back or he knows to come back. Um, this is where you update things like your password, your info, and actually sign out. So here, this button here just tells you uh, the name of the watch because if you've got a couple of kids, you can register them all the same app. You can hit this. This tells me that my daughter Bella's watch is where the one we're currently looking at. Obviously, you can swap that over to another watch if you have other kids. If you click on this settings, you can see the SOS family member. This is the number to call if they press the SOS. Uh, Sound Guardian, this is the person. It can be the same person who will be notified if the geofencing is broken. Uh, the, the location updates, uh, schedule, so how often to poll them, ping back where they are, every 10 minutes. SMS alerts, here's the phone book. Add the people and their phone numbers in here, and these are the people that can phone and message the watch. These people only, which is key. I have you now.